Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sans of Vool, and in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how to make more complex panel lines. So in a previous video we have had a look at different methods of making panel lines, but that was to have a look at the different ways that we can actually make them work, not how to make more complex shapes. If you do want to check out that tutorial because you haven't seen it, there is a link in the top right hand corner and also another one in the description in case you want to have a look at it later. And that covers both how to do this in native Blender or how to use different add-ons, for example, hard ops or box cutter to give effectively the same result, but doing it in different ways. So I'm starting off with this and effectively this is meant to be an alien type door or sort of portal that's gonna open up. And as you can see, I've already put one of these panel lines that's a little bit more complex around the outside of this. And I want to add some detailing onto the door itself. Now I generally go about something like this and I have seen people do this in some hideous ways that just seem to make life much more harder than they need to be by using just a simple circle. So all I'm gonna do is firstly make sure that my cursor is in the middle of the door just to make things a little bit faster. Shift and A and I'm gonna bring in a mesh and I'm going to bring in a circle. Now I've got this set to 128 vertices because that's the same as I've got for the door. This is for 3D printing and I want it to look more rounded and a bit smoother. But obviously if you're doing this for CG work, as I've said many times before, you'd probably have it lower than this. Now I'm just gonna press Shift and Z to go into X-ray mode and I'm gonna press R and Y to rotate that round and type in 90 to get that to the correct orientation. Then I'm gonna make that a little bit larger, probably something about there basically the size that I want it to be in comparison to my door. And I'm going to press G and X and bring that out in front of my object. So I don't need to be looking at this in X-ray mode. So that looks about right. Now, importantly, if I press N to bring up the end panel, because I've enlarged this, the dimensions are all off. So I'm going to press Control and A and I'm going to apply the scale to set everything back to one on the scale. And then I'm going to press N to hide that. Don't really need it. So what I'm gonna do is make some of these shapes here that are quite typical in sort of alien type designs to make the panels more interesting. So I'm just gonna go into vertex mode and we can see here I've got all these vertices and effectively all I wanna do is just select the ones that I want to bring either inwards or outwards depending on the way I'm thinking of this. Now, just for interest, I've got a big section over here and then little ones on this side. So I'm gonna actually do the opposite on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one of the vertices or I could select off so there's no vertices press C to bring up the circle tool, which I can make bigger or smaller. And let's start with this large one, but this time I want it over here. So I'm gonna get a nice group of those by clicking and selecting those. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller and get maybe one, two. Actually, I could make these the same size, so that's six. So I'm gonna make that one six as well. And then I'm gonna do maybe one there of six maybe another one there of six. And I'm probably gonna leave that there at this point. Obviously I could do more or less, entirely up to you. I'm gonna press escape to get out of that circle select. And then I'm going to scale these in just to make the shape. And what it will do is it will give these nice cuts. They're gonna be at about the right angle as if they were going towards the center. So if I press S, we can see that there. Okay, now if this isn't working quite right, for example, if I press S, you can see that this isn't quite scaling towards the center. If I go in, it's gonna go over there. And that is because it's selecting the average of these points. And that's because that's what I've got here. And there's more of them over this side than that. So that's causing a bit of problem. So all I'm gonna do is select the 3D cursor as that point. And now if I press S, you can see it goes right towards the middle. Now you can also see if I come to the side while I'm scaling these, it's also scaling in this way, which I don't want. Now to solve that, all I need to do is confine that. So I don't want it going along the X axis. So I can press shift and X and that will go in. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do this wrong on purpose. So I'm actually gonna go back to that. Imagine that I've come here. I'm gonna go to shift and Z so I can see an X ray. So it's not gonna be a problem seeing where it's going. And I'm gonna press S and I'm gonna do this intentionally wrong just so I can quickly talk you through how to fix it. So let's go to somewhere about there. So having a look at this, this is obviously wrong. It's gonna cause a problem. If you ever come across this, just select everything, change the transform point off of the 3D cursor and just change it to the active element and then just press S, confine it to the X axis and then just press zero and it's gonna line everything up. So you've got that now straight. So that's a quick, easy way to solve that if you need to. Then I'm just gonna press E and extrude these out again on the X axis just to give a bit of depth there. Finally, all I need to do is come into the modifiers, select a solidify modifier, and then all I need to do is just change this thickness. 
Now, firstly, you'll notice this looks pretty rubbish. It's because I haven't clicked even thickness. As soon as I click that, it's gonna look a little bit nicer. And all I need to do is make a decision of if I want this to go in, so there, or out. And I say that because sometimes you do get better results going one way or the other. In this instance, it's not really a problem. It's not as complicated as it could be. So either way is going to look fine. So effectively, just see what you like in terms of the positioning. I think I'm going to go with that. So it's more towards the outside. You can come over here and select an exact thickness, but I'm doing this fairly roughly. The other way is if you've got a thickness that you're happy with, for example, I want it to be this thick, you can just change that offset from minus one to one and it will go the other way. So it's a quick way once you've got the exact thickness of sorting it out. I want minus one. So we've got there. Once you've got that, we can apply it, though in this instance we don't actually need to. I'm going to press G and X, move that in. I'm just going to use the really simple method of just cutting it in. So something like there. Let's just have a look at how much it's in. That should be about right. And I've got ball tools activated. We're going to use ball tool quite a lot later just to make things nice and easy. So if you don't have it, edit, preferences, come over here, get the add-ons up ball and you want to have ball tool activated that means instead of having to use modifiers to add things in all i need to do is click the object that i want to be the cutter then shift click the other object and then press Control and minus and that's gonna delete it or cut it out it makes a difference boolean so just gonna hide that object I've got that nice and sorted i've got my interesting panel lines and if i want to i can just come into this object and start adding in whatever extra details i want to do for example windows so there we've got my nice simple window. So that works really well if we want to have something circular, but what about something a little bit more complex, especially something where we're gonna have maybe crossing over panel lines. This is something that really often causes a lot of problems. So what would be something good to demonstrate this on? Let's go for something like a six millimeter landing pad. So bring a cylinder and I'm gonna change that to six. So it's a sort of good shape. And um, that's probably a bit small, so let's scale that up a bit. Uh, I'm not going to be too exact on the size. We'll just go with that for now. In fact, that's probably actually really too small, but whatever, it's fine. Then I'm going to scale that on the Z axis, so S and Z. And let's go into face mode, select that face, and we'll scale that a little bit smaller. So it's a bit more of an interesting shape, something like that. All right. Okay, and then I to insert that. E to extrude that down and we've got a sort of beginnings of a landing pad. So this is something that's going to be relatively non-detailed unless we put some panel lines on it. So let's get started with that. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things quite intentionally wrong with this uh, just to demonstrate points. And then I'll obviously fix them. But I just want to talk through some of the issues that I see people doing. So let's start with bringing in a circle. Let's shift Z so we could see that. And let's scale that up to something like there and okay now to demonstrate a point with something that can go wrong i want to actually have something that's got a little bit more geometry on it so i'm going to bring in a circle as well so i'm actually going to go into this go into vertex mode and shift and a and i'm going to bring in a circle and let's go to one two eight and let's scale that up to about there so this is going to be the center of the landing pad and then i can go to object mode g and z that up so it's visible vertex mode a to select everything e to extrude it up Z to constrain it on the Z axis, back into object mode and add a solidify modifier just to get that having some thickness to it. And usefully, because it's all one object, they're going to nicely have the same thickness. Oh, and I haven't control and A applied the scale, which is always the biggest crime. So let's go and fix that. And let's do something like that. That should look all right. So everything is the same thickness now. So we've got this going on. Now this would be fine to go and cut straight into this, but let's add a little bit more detail to it. Let's do something like some additional panel lines that will come from the outside to the center. If you imagine there'd be like these landing light going into the middle. So we want some panel lines for those lights to go into. So let's shift an A and I'm just gonna bring in a cube to be my additional details. I'm gonna scale that down. I'm just sort of guesstimating it for this. And where do we want this to be? So let's rotate this so that we can have it coming out almost like a, a spoke. So firstly, S and Y to scale that up on the Y. I'll probably need to do it a bit more or less than that. I'll worry about that in a second. 
and then we want to rotate it round, and I'm just going to guesstimate it, but essentially that's going to be, well, a circle is 360, and then I'm going to need to divide that by the six sides, and I want it halfway, so that's going to be 12. So there we go. And then I'm going to press G to move it, and then I want Y, and Y again to constrain to that axis, and actually that's a point I probably want to make this go exactly up to the edge. So I'm going to G and Z that so it's a bit easier to see. Go into snapping mode, make sure I'm on edge mode. And then if I G, Y, Y, that's going to be perfectly on that edge. And then I just need to go into vertex mode. Grab those, G, Y, Y, and move those to somewhere there. So I want this to be part way across my mesh there so that it doesn't look too... In fact, let's G and Y, Y that a little bit more. Oh, let's turn the snapping off. G, Y, and Y. There we go. Now I've got the issue that stupid I moved the whole thing. I don't know why I did that. So shift and S and I'm going to move the origin back to the cursor. And what that's going to mean I can do is press shift and D to duplicate it. R to be rotating it straight away. And then that is going to be, well, 360 divided by 6. So I need it 60. And if I just press shift and R to repeat the action, I've got all of those done. And just to make it a bit easier to see, I'm just going to increase these in height slightly. So come to the x-axis, vertex mode, x-ray mode, select all of them, G and Z. I'm just making them a bit thicker so they're easier to see. Now, this is the mistake that I see people make a lot. So now we need to cut this out of our landing pad. And there are a couple of ways of doing this. The first is that you start cutting all of these objects individually out of this landing pad, and that can work. But a lot of the time, because you're getting things cutting over each other, it causes issues. I generally find the best way to organize it, and this is just something that I do to find everything easier, is I'm going to make one overall cutter. And that makes everything a lot easier to solve when there's problems. So I'm just gonna come here. In fact, actually, let's duplicate all of these so I can talk about this correctly. So I'm gonna put that over there. And I'm gonna select all of these, and I'm gonna add them to this cutter. I'm going to turn snapping on. I'm going to G and Z that up so they're all aligned because otherwise our panel lines are going to be all at different heights. And I'm going to shift select that, control and plus, and now I've got one big total cutter. And then I'm just going to G and Z those down. Just have a look at that. Yep, until they're going to cut out. And now what that means is that I just need to click my one cutter here. And if there's any problems with this, I'll see it and then control and minus it from here. And what you'll see now is we've got nice clean cuts. Nothing's have a problem. We're not getting any weird Boolean issues where faces aren't showing up. And what's nice about this is that I've only got one Boolean to look at here. And if I want to do anything with this cutter, I can click on the cutter and I've got all my individual Booleans there attached to it. It makes it a lot easier to look at, especially if I go here and press Q and ever scroll. That means I can select this one and then I can use Q and ever scroll to go through the other ones. I should say ever scroll is a function of hard ops. It's really useful for helping to essentially sort out your life. And this makes it work quite nicely. But there's a problem with this. If I just hide all of these objects and have a look here. This looks great until I apply it. And if I go into vertex mode, you'll see what I mean. Here, where we've got this complex intersection here, because we've got all of these bits of the circle, and then our big cutter here was cutting through it, this is going to cause a lot of little issues. We don't like that. It's going to be a problem. It's not going to be the biggest problem in the world, but it's fairly ugly geometry. It can cause problems if we start doing more with this object. So let's make it so we don't have this issue in the first place. And actually, this makes your life simpler, not having to do this. So I'm going to come and fix this over here. So all I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to select all of these objects that I want to select. And this time, and this is what makes this great, I'm not even going to bother aligning them. I'm just going to press Control and Plus to add them to this. And then importantly, I'm just going to press Shift and A, add in a cube. You could just do this with Box Cutter. I do want to say that. Let's turn off snapping. S to scale that up. And G that down to about there. Let's just check that it's, there we go. So we do want to move that around. So G and X, so it's covering everything. And then I'm just gonna cut this out of my main cutter. So control and minus. And what that means is we've got nice flat bottom to this. I haven't had to mess around with any of this aligning nonsense. And 
All I'm going to do is select all of these and move them down. Again, with box cutter, this is a lot easier because it parents everything, but don't worry about that for now. So G and Z moving everything down. There is where I want to cut it. And I'm going to select the cutter. Select the object, control and minus. And we've got exactly the same effect now as we did over here. Looks no different. All I've done is instead of having to align everything, I've just brought in this cube to effectively do the aligning for me to cut off the bottom. But importantly, if I just uh, select all of these, hide those and hide that and apply this. If I go into vertex mode, we suddenly have much, much cleaner geometry. If we look at these side by side, here we have this horrible mess of geometry here. Here we have very clean geometry. So not only is this method a little bit quicker and easier, it means that we don't have to worry about all of this faffing, everything going wrong. It, it just makes life easier. So that process there seems to get better results. For me, it also causes less problems whenever you're going to do something with it. Honestly, it's the way to go. So hopefully that's been some useful tips there. As always, please do give the video a like if you found it useful. And if you've got any questions or anything else you'd like me to demonstrate that you've seen either on the channel or you just want to do and you're not sure how to do it, please do feel free to ask in the comment section or drop me a message somewhere on Facebook or on Instagram. You've got my Instagram handle at the bottom of the page.